are in Pennsylvania, about to drive through the Blue Mountain Tunnel. This tunnel is really cool. We're on our way to check out the abandoned tunnels here in Pennsylvania that used to be part of the same highway, but they became obsolete. They didn't want to pay for the expansion job, so they're all abandoned and open to the public, which is really awesome of Pennsylvania to leave it open to explore. So, when this tunnel here was created, there was one lane of traffic going in each direction, just like the abandoned tunnel. But the abandoned tunnel, they never built the second tunnel next to it for the other direction of highway. Like this one now has, both of these lanes are going the same direction. And now we're coming out, and immediately we're going to go back into another tunnel, which is really cool. Usually when I go to Pennsylvania, I take the back roads because it's so scenic, but I just wanted to drive through these awesome tunnels. They charge you $7 to drive through these tunnels, the toll. Here we go, into the next one. Can't wait to get to the abandoned ones. The first time I ever explored them was like, like four years ago. I made a video in the winter time, the summer time. But I haven't been here in two years, and every single time I come, the graffiti is all completely different. It gets repainted so often. The decay inside of the pump houses is always much worse. The vandalism is much worse. Eventually, you won't even be able to go up and down the stairs anymore. Those stairs were in such bad shape. But today, I'm hoping we can get up them, get into the duct work. Like, where we're driving right now, right above us, there's a bunch of vents, and you can actually walk around. There's a giant ductwork system right above the road to suck up and pump out all the exhaust from the vehicles. And there's always bats in the abandoned tunnels. That's really cool. It's kind of like a Willy Wonka tunnel, the ductwork. It starts at like 14 feet, and by the time you get to the middle of it, it's 3 feet. Then it opens back up again, which is really, really cool. We should be there within the next half an hour, and we'll begin our hike. There are more tunnels on this highway, but we're getting off the them, I think. This is really cool what they have here on the Pennsylvania Highway. They have all these permanent fixtures here at a push of a button just pop out when they gotta do tunnel work. So they don't have to set all this stuff up. Pretty cool. We're coming up to another tunnel now. All right, so here's the tunnel they're actually working on. So there's gonna be head-on traffic in the same tunnel with us while they shut down the other one to do work. The speed limit's reduced a lot. They have all these temporary things they put in the holes in the road. It's cool how the lights start off bright and they slowly dim as you go through the tunnel to adjust your eyes. It says to take off your sunglasses and turn your lights on, unlike that one truck that just went by. to the area of the highway. This right here would have been a overpass, but the bridge was too deteriorated and they tore it down. The highway used to pass right over here. Now the new highway actually passes over the abandoned tunnel. If we would have stayed on that highway I showed earlier, it would have gone over it. So here is a mailbox because someone lives up here, but this is also access to the abandoned highway. We can't drive down the abandoned highway, but it's open to walking and bicycles.
Yeah, this is someone's house right there to the left. But now we're on the abandoned highway. And you can park here. You can go for a walk because you see right here, this is where the overpass would have been. You can't go any further because the bridge is gone. But where I am now is a lane of traffic. To my right, the travel lane is so overgrown you can't even see it. And then we have the little center divide median. I've been here before. There's been a couple of cars, but it's such a long walk through these tunnels. Like, you're probably... If you want to explore both tunnels from here, it's an entire day thing. I will drive to the second tunnel. One time on a bike, it took, I think, maybe 40 minutes on a bike to even get there. So walking, it would take multiple hours to get to the second tunnel. But this is the more exciting, bigger tunnel. If you don't think you can walk the entire distance, this is the one to check out. The more exciting, big tunnel. I think I'm gonna park right here. Tuck the vehicle a little bit into the woods. And by the looks of it, I think they actually did clearing because you see the little center divide median between the pavement. There was a ton of trees last time. They brought equipment in here and they trimmed the entire trail so it wouldn't be so overgrown. That's a big improvement since last time. Let's get out and explore. All right, everyone. There has been some changes since the last time we were out here. They cut down all the trees growing on the median. You see, some of them were pretty big. Look at that stump. You couldn't even walk over here in these two lanes. It was just over here, completely grown in after many years of being abandoned. Just a couple minutes further down the highway, you can see here they actually use machinery to scrape everything off the pavement. They scraped all the dirt, all the debris that's built up over the decades not being used and they pushed it and plowed it all off to the side. At this point of the highway, they didn't do much clearing at all. They did trim the center median, but not much more. You see, no more two lanes going through. This lane's completely into the forest. Over here used to be a toll plaza. It looks like they may have done some cleaning up over here too. It looks like maybe they brought out street sweepers. Looks a lot cleaner than the last time I was out here. So this is about a 20 minute walk to the big tunnel. When they did the trimming, they even marked where the storm drain cover is missing. Cause this used to be a drainage ditch in the middle leading to a drain. Someone probably stole the drain cover scrappers. This place had been severely stolen from and scrapped when it was abandoned. You see here, they didn't do much cleanup over here. You can barely tell the roads there. Still mostly grass up ahead. The trees are hanging way over it. But they did do a good job of cleaning it up and making it look more like a trail. But at the same time, it's not as cool because it doesn't look as abandoned. But they do need to have it open enough where they could get an emergency vehicle to the tunnel. That's probably why they trimmed it, I would assume. All right, everyone, we're about two thirds of the way to the tunnel. We're going up in elevation a little bit and now there's a teeny bit of snow. Look how deteriorated the other side is where nobody walks. Just from being overgrown this side with no one walking here, you can see how much the grass was able to get its roots in and deteriorate the asphalt. All right, everyone, we have arrived to the tunnel. Now that it's winter, you can see the big trucks up on the mountain. The highway now goes over the mountain instead of through the mountain on this road. And we finally made it to the tunnel. All right, everyone, we made it to the tunnel and along with the trimming they did on the road, this place looks a lot cleaner. Look, they painted over all the graffiti with gray paint. So everything you see here is brand new. That's why it's not absolutely covered in it anymore. They did a paint job. Oh, here is the rules. They put a new rule sign up because the last one was painted over. Woo! I love the echoes. Here's some of the drainage systems where the electrical conduit went through. So far, you can't see daylight on the other end. 
if, if this tunnel was flat, you would. There's like a hump in the middle so it drains out both sides. Let's zoom in and take a look at the new rules. Close from dawn to dusk. Entry to the, I don't know what that means, authorized vehicles. No firearms. I've seen people camping. Yeah, this is basically the same rules as before. And the camping and spray paint, you know no one's ever gonna follow that. So, whoa, <laughs> that shadow scared me. The first time I came here, these doors, double doors if you wanna call it that, were actually standing. Someone ripped them down. Let's take a little look inside. So right here is the old boiler room. If we look inside, this is where like the old coal furnace would have been. Still got so much coal ash in there, piled up feet high. They used to use coal to heat and power this place. Back when it was open, this place would have been so much more rural. Would have been hard to get power out. Now take a look at the stairs. Those stairs are so dangerous. Well, someone put a ladder there, which is still very dangerous. So every time I visit, we walk up the hill to get to the upstairs. Usually when I come here, I walk through the second floor, then through the bottom. That way you know if you're alone or not, or who is in here with you. There's the road, and we're gonna find a way to get up the hill. Right there looks like the most gradual way to get to the upstairs. As you can see, somebody was camping here. A cute little fire pit in the middle of the road. And look at those big chunks of concrete that fell from the ceiling very recently, probably from the freeze and thaw cycles. I'm kind of amazed at this sign yeah, it doesn't mention the old sign had a big list of items that you have to consent to at your own risk. It mentioned falling concrete, animals, broken glass, asbestos, that kind of stuff, weak floors. But they, didn't, they don't have any sign like that this time. All right, this looks like the easiest way to get up. There is an access road that's overgrown. We'd have to backtrack about a half a mile to use that, but this doesn't seem that bad. That graffiti up top looks pretty cool. Look at all the eyes. After climbing up this steep hill, with the assistance of the Oriental Bittersweet was actually good to grab onto. Right here's a trail that was actually way easier that I didn't see. The trail's not nearly as steep. Walking up at this point. Here is the old access road. You see how it's pretty flat, very gradual. This is how they would have got vehicles up here. This is where the employees that would run these giant pump houses would be. So here, they would have had the pump houses. I forget if this was exhaust coming out or intake. The first time I ever came here, you had to go down the rickety ladder and through the window, but since then people broke down the heavy metal door and it's a lot easier to access the building now. You see, the door isn't even broken down. Someone just smashed through it a little bit. But now we gotta scout it out see if there's any weirdos or animals in there. That's why we always bring bear spray, just in case of a wild animal or something creepy in here. One time I came here, these stairs were so slippery and dangerous with ice. Not this time, pretty clear. Gotta watch for soft floors. 
Carefully crawl through the bottom of the door. Let's see if these stairs have... Yeah, I went down here last time, but these stairs get more and more dangerous every time. I don't think I want to go in here this time. That would have been the bathroom, though, for the workers. That door right below the entryway. Yeah, th this is slowly becoming more and more dangerous, but this area here will remain safe for quite a while because it's reinforced concrete. This right here, there's another door right there. This is where they would have had a crane to lift up heavy items when they were doing work. And you see that pipe right there, what's shedding off that pipe? That is asbestos. Just don't touch that stuff. Don't tread against it. It's fine if you don't touch it. Oh wow, look how muddy it is in here. It's super muddy. And these are the gigantic blower fans that would have pushed air into the tunnel, it looks like. Not out of it from here. Check it out. Look at all the garbage inside this giant blower fan. <laughs> Boom. That's kind of cool. And there's the entrance to the ductwork that rides above the tunnel. Even on these colder days, it's usually warmer in there because there's no wind. All the mud and stuff is a good thing to see. Don't have to worry about stirring up asbestos. If this was dry like in the hot summer, you want to tread very lightly. That scary thing right in there, that's been there for years. No one's ever repainted it. There's so much silt in here that this door is like locked down in it. That's pretty cool. All right, everyone, here we go. Very muddy and water definitely trickles over that little threshold down these stairs. Cause look at the amount of sediment in here. This place has brushing water every time. Yeah, the stairs are coated in so much silt from when it goes it's like probably like a waterfall of the stairs. And look, our first hibernating bat friend. Look at that. This time of year, it's very hard to wake these guys up. We've screamed and made all kinds of weird noises in these tunnels before. I've never woken them up. See, so you've got the doors here because when those fans are running, it's so strong you need these super thick doors to not rip apart. Yeah, look at the water spilling in here. This place has the best echo I've ever seen in my whole life anywhere. This one place. A couple years ago, I actually brought a bicycle in here. Could only ride it for a little bit because like I said, the tunnel right here, the ceiling is maybe nine feet. If I walk to about here, the ceiling quickly gets to maybe 14 feet. But by the time we get to the middle of the tunnel, it will be like three feet, you gotta crouch. Then there's a tiny door which separates the blowers because there's a whole nother pumping station for the other end of the tunnel. You walk through the little door and it gets bigger and bigger. So here are some little tiny tracks like for a mining cart. That's how they get maintenance and supplies through the place. Look at this, place is really cool. Yeah. It's awesome, oh look at that. We have a, no, those are Black Widow friends on the ceiling, but I'm sure we'll see more bats, especially as we get towards the middle of it. Right there, you got gold spray paint on the ceiling. And as we walk through the tunnel, we gotta be careful of these holes everywhere. So the round holes would have been light fixtures inside the tunnel, these slots, are where the exhaust would have came up or maybe air got pushed down. It looks like by the way the blowers are set up. Yep, so you got the little tiny railroad tracks. Most of it has been ripped up by scrappers and stolen. You've got these stainless steel columns holding up the floor. Look at all the silt and dried up mud right here in the middle. It must have to rain so hard to get this going. Right here we got some cracking or some dripping out of the crack. 
because we are in a mountain and they are leaky. We'll be walking underneath the active highway, but we're so deep in the mountain you can't feel vibrations or anything. Oh, we have come across another bat friend. We're probably going to see so many bats that I'm not going to film the entire adventure. Look at that. Bat hibernating. Pretty cute. I'm not going to film my whole way through this. Not this time. I'll just show some cool highlights through the tunnel. Got some leaking water. I believe the other side of the tunnel is extremely leaky. Got another bat up there and a black widow below him. So because I am walking in this tunnel, that means I'm not allowed to go in a lot of caves inside national parks. Because see, I'm exposed to the bats in this tunnel and I remember last year I wanted to go in some caves at the Crater of the Moon National Park and they ask you, um, have you been exposed to any bats in the past two years? Because even though you put your clothing or boots through a washing machine, it does not kill the fungus that kills the bats. So if you go in those, you can potentially spread it. That's how contagious, what is that called, the white nose syndrome the bats get? But these bats, looking at them, they look very healthy. And I'm actually happy because this time there's a lot more bats than in times past. In times past, I've only seen maybe one or two through the whole tunnel. But I've already seen at least five, maybe six. And I'm sure we'll see lots more as we walk through. And eventually the tunnel will get very short. Now the ceiling is maybe around 12 feet. But I'll show you once we get down to a narrow spot and we have to walk through a creepy little door. This place has the best echo ever. It also plays tricks with you. Like it, your own voice gets muffled and distorted. Sometimes it sounds like there's someone else in here with you. You never know. But on a cold day like this, there's usually not many people around. Here's like an access port where they could get up. Don't want to fall down there, but that's the roadway down below. It's high enough for a big rig to go through. This tunnel originally started as a railroad tunnel, so it's very flat of a grade for that. It was abandoned the project until the Pennsylvania Turnpike took it over, made it into a roadway tunnel, which has been closed for decades. Although here and there it's been maintained, the military has used it for practice. They made a movie here once, they probably cleaned it up a little for that. And the smaller tunnel that we might visit later on today, which we're going to drive to because it's quite the hike there and back, it would take the whole day. That tunnel actually has brand new pavement inside it. They didn't repave it because they're going to reopen the tunnel or anything. It was just paving practice for the new guys at the DOT. They used the abandoned highway to do some practice paving with the new guys. That's all it was. And look, we got some more little tracks. Every now and then you'll find a piece of this that a bunch of people were able to rip up down below because they just want to hear a massive echo. One time I was in here, it was a metal trash can lid and that was amazing throwing that around, the echoes it made. All right, now the ceiling has gone down to about seven feet, just a little above my head. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to start crouching. The last time I went through a walk in here, my back was a little bit sore until I got back out. It will get down to about three feet. In this tunnel, it takes quite a while to walk through it. It's a long one. Echo's not as good once you're in the narrow part, but when you're yelling from the wide angle into the smaller part, it has the best echo ever. Haven't seen any bats this deep. They don't want to fly that deep into the tunnel.
after when we got to the part now, now the ceiling is probably four feet or so, having to duck a lot. And this is when my legs and back are gonna start feeling it. We have to do this for quite a while. And eventually there'll be a little metal isolation door. Haven't seen many bats this far in. Barely any graffiti. Those people are too afraid to come in here or they know their artwork will never be seen this far in. Look at this everyone. The railroad track is so rusted it just shattered into little pieces. This area you can tell must flood a lot maybe during the spring thaw. It's very leaky here. My back is starting to hurt because now we've got down where the ceiling is probably less than four feet. And there's some good deterioration happening here. I wouldn't be surprised in a couple decades if I tried to visit this again, if it was actually unsafe to walk up here. I don't see the doorway yet. My back is starting to get very sore. The ceiling, I think, is still getting a little shorter as we go on. I feel like every time I go through this, I'm either a little more out of shape or something. It's always a little more painful coming through here every oh, time I do. Off that McGriddle. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, this big light I just turned on. Cannot see. Cannot see the wall yet. There's going to be a wall coming up soon with a creepy door you got to squeeze through. All right, everyone. We finally found the wall. And amazingly, this far in the tunnel, which is like over half a mile deep in the mountain, we found a bat. You don't want to hit your head on them, stress them out. But they look very healthy, which is a great thing. Bats haven't been doing that well in recent years. So it was really nice to see a healthy one. This is the halfway point in the tunnel. Finally, my legs are killing me. And we gotta keep on going. Wow, a lot of wind going through this. Squeezing through. A squeeze. I got that scary door that I'm always worried is gonna be locked coming through here. Ouch. This is more painful the taller you are. If you're short, it probably won't hurt your back. Now, just wait until the ceiling gets taller. It'll feel amazing to stretch my back out once this gets going again. And then we'll come out in an identical pumping station. Right here we got tons of mineral deposits coming out of the mountain. I wouldn't be surprised. It looks like a big pile of horse poop there. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these minerals are actually road salt penetrating through the mountain from the highway above. Road salt is a nasty thing. And if you live near it, live near a roadway, you'll get what you call effervescence in your basement. And I think that's what all this stuff is. Road salt making its way through the ground coming in here, which will slowly destroy this concrete and rebar. Or it could just be natural lime from the ground, one or the other. It might be road salt, I'm thinking. More buildup, it looks like big nasty poop. All these mineral buildups look gross. Still waiting for the ceiling to get higher. This is starting to hurt. Finally opening up. Oh. Oh my gosh, I can finally stretch my back and legs. My legs and lower back are really hurting. That was a tough one. The most bats I've ever seen in here. There's another one. I must have seen probably three dozen bats. I don't think I've ever seen more than just a couple in here. I'm so happy that I finally opened back up nice and big. Nice. Someone had a party in here with glow sticks 
There's glow sticks everywhere this time. You see right here all these tubes on the walls. Those weren't electrical or anything. They were to hopefully collect the drips and drain them instead of, you see what happens over the years. That right there is what we call iron oxidizing bacteria. It's actually alive. It's not just rust. It's literally eating the rebar. And that's why the concrete's failing there. If you jumped around there, you could possibly fall through down to the road. Yeah, you see, sticking out of the wall right there, if we zoom in, um, you can see the tube, the 90 degree angle coming out of the wall. It would have had a tube attached to it to drain that drip. But years of neglect and kids vandalizing it, this is what happens. It's falling apart quite a bunch. I can see a crack of light at the end, so we're getting there. Look at all these drainage tubes. This one here went up somewhere. It was supposed to catch a drip. It's not dripping anymore. Maybe it was back in the day. Wow, the ceiling got really high now. Can't imagine how painful it must have been to be employees who had to work in that very tight spot. Doing big repairs. Here's more tubes all over the ground. I think there's gonna be a lot of water in this pump house. One of them's very wet. A lot more tubes to drain the water. Someone tilted this one down onto the road through the light fixture. Some vandal did that. Look at the railroad tracks here, they're so abandoned. I mean, so rusted out. What's all over the ground? It looks like someone punctured a spray paint can that ran out of pressure and just threw it everywhere. Got more sitting water. And here we are. We are about to enter the other pump station. Yeah, this looks like the one where someone stole the door. I knew one. Oh, someone had a campfire in here too. A lot of ash on the floor. Here we go. Ooh, lots of wind coming through. Heavy metal stairs. Not too much water. It must have been the other side, the wet one. It was very muddy in there. Gotta have rubber boots while walking through this place to be comfortable. This one still has one of the guards on the blower. Broken glass everywhere that people smashed out of here years ago. Don't want to step in the asbestos and stir it up. Oh, there's eggs. Somebody was maybe cooking eggs or throwing eggs at someone. Cool. All right, here we go. We're gonna go out of this building now. Here's another hoist. Now, is this, this one safe to go down the side? Let's check. So right here, this is on top of the tunnel right here. Now, is it, how safe is this? Wait a second, just go one at a time. All right, now this is solid concrete here. You won't fall through that part. Now this, definitely not going downstairs this way. We'll walk down the hill again. This door has always been locked, but this used to be the bathroom. You see a smashed toilet in there. 
a smashed sink. I'm assuming someone really skinny probably crawled through there. Or, yeah, that door is locked. But this would have been another equipment room. Here's where the hoist would have gone through. Pretty cool. Here's a view out this side. Now this side, because the cliff's so steep, we actually have to go down the maintenance road to get back down to the road. It's not that bad. You see it's like a ramp going down to about there. There's a little bit more snow on this side. Looks like some tree work was done. Is this the new pavement side? No, that's the small tunnel. This pavement doesn't look brand new. Now, I remember the first time I ever came here, I used a bicycle, and somehow I got a bicycle up this cliff. That was tricky, but I did it somehow. And I can also tell by, see the trail right here? Daredevils stick their feet in these and get up that steep wall, which is almost straight up. So you see down here on the way up, this is asbestos around the hot water pipes, maybe boiler pipes. And people that aren't aware of what this is, when they go around this corner, they're grabbing this. They're stirring it up, maybe touching their face with that on their fingers, exposing themselves to asbestos. But walking in these abandoned places, as long as you don't be kicking the floor, stirring it up, you'll be fine. But if you're in here with like a whole ton of people walking around, then maybe you're going to want to wear some sort of respirator. But just like the other side, up and out, this side didn't even have a door. I didn't have to crawl through the bottom. You're going to die, it says on the stairs. So this parking area is also very overgrown where the workers would have been. This is pretty intact. Where we entered, somebody unbolted all this just to steal all the metal. Probably a long time ago. I know at least in my area, iron is worth like two cents a pound when you scrap it. So even a fully loaded truck is only, it's not worth it. It's not worth the labor of stealing it. Someone stole the drain cover. But the drains and stuff here still work. There's no evidence this little area floods. So this is where the workers would drive down. This is where they would have parked when they were here. Oh, wow. Look at that big bird's nest over there on top of the safety fence. And down here, there's a little on the top of the tunnel. What's that say? No trespassing, violators will be prosecuted. That sign is when they originally closed the tunnel, but now it's open to the public as a bike trail, which is awesome. I love how Pennsylvania leaves a bunch of things open at your own risk, because they have laws. If you get hurt in there, you know, it's your own fault. That's how it should be in other states, but unfortunately it's not. Somehow, on that rocky cliff, I somehow got my bicycle up there the first time I visited. Looking at it, I don't really know how. But I know I definitely rode back down on this trail. It's not even that overgrown. Before we walk back through the tunnel, this is access like for police and emergency vehicles to get up to the tunnel. There's this old abandoned shack Got a heavily traveled trail going to it. Completely collapsed. Maybe one of the workers or someone lived in here at one point. Completely destroyed. Not salvageable. Right next to it is a little trickling stream. This is all the water getting collected out of the tunnel through its drainage system that is still working. So that tiny shack is down this dirt road across the way from where we hiked down from the top of the tunnel. It's a nice gradual access road where the employees would have driven up there and parked for the day or the night shift. And here we are about to go, actually walking where the traffic was, not up inside it. The yellow lines still exist, but 
I'm assuming these yellow, yeah, definitely not original from the tunnel. You see how there's a whole bunch of yellow lines? Once again, the DOT brought a new person that they were training in here to show them how to use the truck so they don't mess it up on the actual road. You see, they showed them how to do one line. Looks like they showed them how to do a double line. Showed them how to do the dotted passing line. Hey, look, there's the heavy metal door from up in the ductwork. Someone brought it down here. That must have made an awesome noise because I'm assuming they threw it off from way up there. This didn't thaw out at all. The sun doesn't ever hit in this area. All right, this is where I brought my bicycle up through. 100% this trail here. I remember it. I almost dropped it a few times. It was steep. I love that forest up there. I think that's called red pine. It grows very, very slow and it's drop tolerant. So it looks like the state or whoever, they didn't paint over the graffiti on this side to make it look more presentable. Maybe just the other side because that's where the parking lot is. Tunnel's long enough, we cannot see daylight. This is one of those tunnels, it looks like it's getting further the more you walk in. Which is kind of cool. I hear dripping water in here. Underneath here, there's like, I think maybe over here we can see. So this used to be a storm drain. You see people filled it with trash, but it's obviously working well enough that it's not trickling in the edge of the road. And that is all the water that you saw behind the little shack down there. There's pipes that are still working underneath here somewhere. Just look at the lockbox on this thing. Super heavy duty doors that someone smashed in to get in here. Here's that staircase, the dangerous rickety staircase. Some asbestos up there too. Over here is another coal boiler. Look at all that coal dust that someone's been kicking out. You can tell this area floods sometimes. Lots of asbestos up in the coal bin. So this may have been just where they stored the coal maybe. Maybe this is, I never looked in here before. Oh my gosh, I never looked in here before. This is cool. Doesn't go up at all, but this is where the, this definitely when it rains, water goes through here. That's so cool. It's like a sewer. If you ever watch those plumbers on YouTube on clogging these types of things, that's really cool. I would love to look in here when it's raining and actually flowing. I can tell that still works. That's really cool in there. Wow, look at the load of trash. Drink bottles, spray paint cans, chunks of concrete everywhere. And that was a lot of coal in there. So in the comments, what do you guys think? Was that just where they stored the coal? Maybe they shoveled it into a furnace, whatever used to be there that's missing. They definitely burned it somehow. I'm thinking that may have just been a storage bin. Like, I remember the apartment building I used to live in had a bunch of coal bins in the basement. Um, each apartment unit had its own furnace, had its own coal bin, but it was converted to natural gas. But the coal bins were still there and converted into pantries, the little coal rooms. It was kind of cool. I know in Pennsylvania, there's a large population of people who still burn coal in their house. They never convert it to gas or heating oil just because it's so abundant and cheap. Pennsylvania has so much coal beneath it. And if we look up here, look, these light fixtures are actually still there. You can see where the light bulb would have been screwed into to the left, but someone obviously threw stuff at it, smashing them. And the rest that people could actually really get to, they obviously kicked out years ago. You can still see soot all over the ceiling from the tractor trailers coming through here. Even though it was built for trains, it was never used for trains. It was just repurposed for traffic eventually. 
back in those days, before emission rules and all that, a lot of the big rigs had a lot of black smoke coming out of the stacks, and that's why the ceiling, I'm assuming, looks like that. A lot of the drains in here still work, which is amazing after decades and decades of neglect. Maybe if we look in here, it's another little drain area like I just showed. It's kind of wet and muddy. What do we see in there? Oh, there's ladder in there. There's a lot of garbage too. That kind of looked like fireworks in there. It says at the end not to discharge a firearm in here, but it would be kind of cool to hear the echo of a firecracker in here. It doesn't say you can't do that. Here's like an electrical box. The insulators, someone smashed. A lot of dripping water here. I think this is what I showed upstairs. It's all crumbling. I think right above us is where that big blob of iron oxidizing bacteria was eating the rebar. And every now and then I heard they actually street sweep in here to clean up the concrete just to make it safer for riding bicycles in the dark because a lot of concrete does fall off the ceiling. All right, here we got a bunch of dripping water. Iron oxidizing bacteria. You see how it's just wearing down the concrete. You see got the little pipes inside the concrete that are meant to manage all that. Not working anymore. That looks nasty, like a big drip of diarrhea coming down the wall. I finally found an awesome piece of metal to make a huge noise. Awesome echo. Did you see that big spark it made when it hit the floor? I'm not sure if I ever seen this thing open. Is this plumbing or electrical? Electrical, I can see the conduits. People stole all the copper wires. How loud is this going to be shutting this? I want to try shutting this door. Ooh. Let's try shutting this. I bet it'll be loud. I think I might cover my ears down and shut. If it even, I don't even think it's a hinge. I'm sure glad I covered my ears. That was loud. No spark that time. A zombie. And there's still a road reflector in here that's working. Someone smashed like a big wine bottle in here. Yeah, you see how it's pretty clean in here. I heard they bring street sweepers in every now and then so that someone riding a bicycle doesn't crash in the dark if they forget to bring a light. Pennsylvania Turnpike. There's a bunch of fruits on the wall. Almost out of the tunnel. It was very nice in here today. Usually it's windy and cold. Today it was cold, but pretty still, which made it nice. Sort of a long walk. My legs are also a little sore. I did a lot of tunnel walking a couple of days ago through three foot pipes. So that definitely didn't help with today. See over here on the right. I wonder how this still looks. When I was in here two years ago, there was a bunch of people with ladders drawing this and they had like a box of every color of the rainbow spray paint. And I'm very surprised that 
barely anyone drew over it. Yeah, so like professional graffiti artists did this. They were in here with ladders and all that all night and they camped in here with a tent. That's in a video I made a few years ago. Look at that rebar. Big pieces showing. Wouldn't want to be standing here when this falls. I'm very surprised that they didn't put the warning up. The at your own risk disclosure. Surprised that sign was never replaced. All right, everyone, we're back to the toll plaza area. And to me, it looks like they definitely did some street sweeping. They also used heavy equipment to push all the debris out of here into the middle. You can see where they left it all. There's a curb over here that's visible. Right here is the toll plaza. You see all the little strips of grass. These were all individual lanes where you'd go through and pay your toll. They put a bunch of markers here so you don't trip on this. Look at the size of the trees they had to cut down compared to my shoe. Pretty substantial. But why are they clearing this? Could they be possibly planning on making this into a much bigger parking lot instead of where I parked? Because a lot of people come to visit the tunnel in the summer. My concern is that they're trying to make it into some safer bike trail or something. Then it won't be abandoned anymore. And that kind of takes the fun out of it. I know they're doing that in Massachusetts to the Clinton train tunnel. They're doing improvements on it. They want to put lights in it to make it into a bike trail. But honestly, I think it's a lot more fun being dark, scary, and usually flooded. I gotta say the pavement's in very good condition for like, what has it been now? Well over 50 years abandoned. Pavement's in great shape. It's only deteriorated in the spots where there was grass and roots destroying it. It held up pretty good to the freeze and thaw cycles because you'll notice in this pavement, they used much bigger stone, which helps hold it together. Like right here is a very good example. The top layer of asphalt, you see how it has smaller stone? It's cracked and deteriorated so badly. But the under layer, look how big the rocks are. That will stand up so much longer than newer roads they're paving. But at the same time, it's more wear and tear on their equipment having to go through the bigger rocks, the milling machine. But is the wear and tear worth it? Probably, if the road lasts three times as long. All right, everybody, we made it back to the car and we're gonna go now for a, I think it's about a 20 minute drive to the smaller tunnel. On our way to the other tunnel, just a little bit of elevation. Now there's a good amount of snow, but by the time we go back down the mountain to the other tunnel, I bet the snow will be just about gone again. Fairly new, and then 
there's another culvert here that's pretty awesome that goes under and this is an original bridge from the highway so I believe this is where we park and this is where we um, get access to the tunnel if you notice to the left on that tree there's security cameras there because they're trying to catch whoever keeps putting graffiti on that bridge so I'll park right here I guess we won't be long this is not a big tunnel and it's not very far like the other one I just checked my map now this is access again to the far end of the one we just went through so I'm gonna drive again and it's like immediate access to the small one because that's still quite a far walk down there but you see they got this tunnel here which is always constantly having to be repainted by the town because people keep putting graffiti in here see they got a camera there got a lot of stalactites this is an original bridge for the highway it goes right over it see the camera there it's chained to the tree if you try to mess with that camera it won't matter because it's recording remotely somewhere else now here's a pretty cool culvert ouch pricker bushes maybe i won't go down to that one these guardrails are actually rusty i know like the state of new hampshire they actually paint them rust colored so they blend in and they like them to look like they've been there a long time so this is all brand new this culvert here is very brand new wow this other one's original to the highway it's a concrete tunnel i've walked through all those things many times in the past These tunnels are actually dated somewhere on the inside. I've been in there before. Let's get down there without slipping. Uh, now you can see, if I zoom in, you can see all the way through it. It's a concrete arch with a nice brick retaining wall around it. The other culvert down there, the brand new one, has really cool baffles in it to slow it down as it passes through. This one doesn't have it, but it's still got the stickers. It's so new. The water, I don't think it's high enough to take it off there. 2017, it's a very new pipe. So we're gonna stop and look at this cool culvert before we go to the other tunnel. I forgot how to get to the other tunnel since I don't go to it often. Usually don't even visit that tunnel since it's not nearly as exciting as the other. So here's another culvert that was probably also installed in 2017. And this one has really cool baffles. The baffles are to slow the water down so it's not speeding through the old culvert and it could cause damage in there. Yep, look, 2017. It's nice to see Pennsylvania takes pride in their culverts. Many states, they don't bother dating them anymore like back in the day or anything. But this is cool. See all the baffles to slow it down. It's like a zigzag in there. The first time I ever came here, this was very good steps. But this thing during storms gets so powerful. Look at all the boulders it's able to just move and throw in here. Eventually, it'll fill it in like this stuff isn't even here. Let's take a little walk through, and then we're about to go in the old pipe that has lots of cave crickets, usually. A lot of people think they're spiders, but they're cave crickets. This is a barn swallow nest on the wall. They usually reuse their nests. If we were here in the spring, there might be eggs in there. All right, everyone, now we're gonna enter a scary culvert underneath the old highway. See this, they got weep holes here. And look, a mouse has been living in there. See the mouse poops up inside here? Yeah, this doesn't look like it ever really runs, but that's in case there's water trapped behind the wall. Instead of freezing and breaking the wall, it can escape. Now we're gonna go in the old culvert, which is really cool. Made out of formed concrete. 
and hopefully we can find a bunch of cave crickets like there usually are in here towards the middle where it's warmer in the winter or maybe that was summer when we saw those guys even the old pipe has some weep holes oh some of them are running this weep hole has water coming out there's also water coming out of cracks where there aren't holes but after all these years this is still in great shape I don't know if it was built by the railroad in the 1800s or by the highway department in the 30s. But it's a nice pipe. Still holding up nice and strong. Maybe someone in the comments knows. I think that's a pike. There's a lot of fish. Look at this. Maybe I can pick them up? Yeah, pick them up. Oh, he actually kind of... Yeah, they're not very skittish. They actually came right up to my lights. Is that a pike? I almost got him the first time. But there's a bunch of them. I saw ripples in the water up here. Looks like an easy place for raccoons to get them because the water's going so low. I doubt they can really get out of here that, that easily. I remember the first time I ever went through here there was like a big blockage backing up the pipe that we kind of busted out of the way. And we're walking up and over instead of back through the pipe. All right, everyone, this is where I parked last time for this. I pulled way over here onto the edge. Um, you might want to get out and then I'll pull over. Mm -hmm. Try to get way over onto this hill where the passenger door probably won't even open. Because I can't park in this little opening, I don't think, because there's a culvert right there. So I'll leave it right here. I think we're good. I'll just shut the mirror. Here we are, everyone, at another underpass. Right here, there's a culvert up here, which I think may have been a highway on-ramp or something at some point. Maybe it's completely unrelated. Culvert right there coming down. See a lot of the ground slipped. But this culvert's still wide open underneath the road. And then that culvert there I walked through once. It's in very bad, rusted out condition. So that eventually may cause issues to the highway. And then that one immediately enters a farmer's culvert with such little room that you can't really get out. So you got to go through the farmer's one. And I ended up where there was a bunch of cows last time. And now there's like a trail here leading up on top of the old bridge. Ooh, I can smell cow poop real strong now. And it's not just cow poop, it smells like it's in water and all fermented and nasty. So, here's a good way to get up. Right here we got some erosion to the edge. Here we are on top of the bridge. You see, this is what the whole highway used to look like, but they did trimming down where I parked before. And look, super easy access to the small tunnel. This one's about half the length of the other. And there's the access going up to the pumping house. Now this one, you can't walk all the way through. There's only one pump house. There's not one on the other side. So you'd go into that area where it keeps getting shorter and shorter. Then you hit a dead end. You can't get out of this one. All right, here's an old power pole that fell over. And look how cool and thick this old bracket was to hold the light post or the light fixture. Here's the brand new pavement I was mentioning just for practice for a new employee of the DOT. You see they did multiple practice shots with the white line. They did a practice yellow line. They did a little bit of pavement, which left a very smooth area for lots and lots of graffiti. Now this one I've never attempted to walk all the way in the shaft since I know it ends. And this one here, it gets so small, the shaft, where you literally can't stand up. Now remember there used to be pigeons living in there. The first time I visited there was lots of hooing sounds in this one. We have company in this tunnel. Let's check out in here. 
Lots of garbage. A metal cabinet. Dripping water, just like the other side. The same kind of furnace or boiler room, whatever you would have called it. The stairwell is in a little better condition, but I'm still not gonna go up that rickety ladder. This tunnel has a lot heavier graffiti, maybe because of the easier access from the road. The other one, you have to walk a bit. <laughs> All right, we made it to the end of the short tunnel and there is no pumping station here, but you see there's still vent holes and if we zoom up inside there, it's very, very little headroom. And because there's a little headroom, no one ever really comes down here. There was a lot of pigeons last time. See, it looks significantly different on this side. There's a little electric room. It kind of looks like a prison cell, but there is no otherwise building. See, no vents, nothing else. The name is gone of the tunnel. Looks a lot different. Can't walk through the duct to work on this one. All right, everyone, we are back to the car and we are ready to take off. So I hope today's video of the abandoned Pennsylvania Turnpike Tunnels was interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day.